Dr. G here. I am taking questions from students uh, in our public relations, advertising, and brand management class. And we're exploring the text, baby. We're looking at um, Arthur A. Seberger's ad fads, consumer culture, Marcel Denning sees popular culture, introductory perspectives, and Robin Blakeman's integrated marketing communication uh, as primary inspirations for a week two questions and let's tackle a couple from seth uh first of all he asks is radio advertising still an effective way to market in the present day and uh again we've got some repetition i'll try not to do answer too many of the same questions but it depends on the product right it depends on the product it depends on the program advertised on right that is to say are you advertising in the right program because it's also about the listening audience if you if your demographic right that primary demographic um that's going to be after your product find appeal in your product spend their money on or and or invest in your product if they're listening to radio a particular program station uh genre of of music or talk radio or what have you then yes then yes your your advertising dollars could be very well spent but you have to understand who who um who's receiving it in order to justify those costs otherwise um you know you could be entirely throwing your money away but the same would go for other mass mediums right this is what was such a risk early on with social media advertising not understanding how to accurately spend that money and that's that's still something that businesses grapple with they're trying to master it and uh, you know we can get into the weeds hopefully not today but you know, Facebook came under fire a little bit for the way that they were using in information from 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 the you know millions and and millions of um, of users that had signed up and 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 what that information that you know allegedly private information was being traded on uh, and how and those are important topics to discuss and we do it throughout the major. So if you're if you if you're trying to you know couple together. Uh, something something of that sort. Look into some of our other courses uh, where we get deeper into those subjects. Next question, do listeners care more about the content or the way that the presenter sounds in present day? In present day ads? I, I guess we're talking about advertising, radio advertising. Uh, I'm not sure, but um, listeners cue us in. The content, do we care more about the content or the way it's presented? Well, I mean, what... Here's here's the question. Here's the answer. What do you care about, right? And I just ask an individual question. So that's for you all, you individuals out there. What do you care about in an ad? And this is a double bind, right? We uh, this is not one person. This is not one person's question. Right? I see it every week. I see it all the time. I think it's easy for us to fall into a trap of asking an either or question when the the truth of the matter is anytime the answer is complicated it's we're probably looking at a both and response right it could be one or the other it could be a combination of both um so that's so that's where that is can advertising on the radio next question show more of a can it show would it show word choice can advertising on the radio demonstrate more of a personal testimony side of advertising it can and i would follow that up with but this is also effective elsewhere right like personal testimony in advertising is used in television we see it in magazines uh you're seeing it on the internet so i it, you know that's not a radio exclusive um Questions from uh, Blakeman's Integrated Marketing Communication, IMC book, from chapter 11 on radio. See, see how we linked, see how we linked these, uh, these books together, right? You see how we like take these and we find the connectivity between um, these. Uh, it's laid out, right? It's beautiful. Love it. Uh, but back to the question, looking at radio advertising, does listening to radio broadcasts singular does listening to a radio broadcast bring out our imagination more than tv does uh, here we go again it's a little bit of a box question uh, there's just a false equivalency here right um 
it does ask us to picture something that it being radio, um, it, it asks us to think visually. So we could be propelled to think more like imagine in our mind, uh, something, um, versus, you know, we see it on TV, but let's take, let's take the example of a music video. Okay. Music video. First of all, video killed the radio star. We all know this. Um, but so when you watch a music video, you're getting the vision of what those producers and artists decided will be the narrative to accompany that song. Sometimes you hear a song a ton and you go watch that music video and you think, hmm, that's not what I was expecting. But uh, in terms of the reversal, I have a question. I have a question for you all. When you're listening to music on the radio or even just, you know, listening audio based sound like that. Are you picturing people singing? Or are you just hearing the words and being stimulated by the, the play and the, and the production and the present, you know, the presentation, the delivery? Uh, if you're doing something like, you know, driving road trip or whatever, you know, uh, are you in the, okay, let's say you're on a treadmill in the gym, you're listening to music. All right. It's just, it's like your power list, right? Um, are, are you, you know, working out and picturing these artists like in front of a microphone or something, or are you just like taking in the sound and kind of moving in rhythm with it? All right. Uh, so again, a false equivalency question, uh, tough to, tough to really answer that. Next question is radio a part of pop culture in its present day it's a smaller part i guess is the what i could say there it's pfft, satellite radio is booming but again even that audience is, is smaller right um so it, radio is not what it was in its heyday right and it's it, it's peak when we were experiencing peak radio in the, in this country um but it it plays a role but a much much lesser role uh, Veronica has a couple of questions. I'll, I'll jump start here. What type of radio ads questions, what type of selections conduct a company to choose what celebrity they will use in their ads? All right. So this question is asking basically, how do you go about picking a spokesperson and some of the most profitable companies would use celebrities? And I say profitable because they would have to make a lot of money and profit to be able to afford a celebrity endorser. Um, so here's my response to this question. Does the celebrity image match their brand? Wait, let me see what, what I write here. I'm shorthand, you know, making quick notes. Does the celebrity image match the company's brand or it's consumer demos. In other words, is the spokesperson a quality of fit for the company or the product? This is a no brainer, right? This is why you see, you know, uh, older people in older ads, you know, endorsing things that, 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 that promote, you know, youth or vitality, uh, wink, right. And, and these kinds of things, uh, just like you have, you know, the chili celebrities promoting whatever uh vitamin hydro uh flavor water that's actually made by coke or pepsi right which most of them are so uh we're you're just kind of fooling ourselves there classic classic ad bait and switch from more profit for the bigger companies gotta love it next question what kind of radio stations are the most expensive ones and the most successful hey it's a fair question. Uh, and, and, you know, I didn't go to the research tank for this, but I, I'm, I'm going to kind of break it down in, 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 in some, in a way that I think is going to be effective for discussion. What, what kind of radio stations are the most expensive ones and the most successful? Here's our large market stations. That would be the answer. Um, so when we, when you hear this term like large market, small market, uh, it's often associated with things like professional sports or, you know, major, maybe radio stations, television stations, and so on. You think large markets are densely populated areas, primarily on the coasts, right? Uh, where there's a ton more 
uh, just people, right? The more people are there, the more currency, the more capital is being generated and, and, and is moving throughout society. And then small markets tend to be those smaller cities or those municipalities, right? There's the sort of, you know, or even your like tri-state towns or whatever. And, and so different levels of revenue are getting circulated in these areas. And so naturally, one has more persuasive. The more people are more densely populated area, the more the higher the ratings you're going to have uh, for something like local radio stations. All right. And so maybe the more you can charge for ads because your ad is going to be more effective. You're just going to have, but you may have more competition also. So, um, you know, I think about a large market station and I think about first and foremost, or, or you know, co-lead here at New York City, LA, right? Los Angeles. And, um, you know, draw a line in the sand, right? Yeah, Toronto, Chicago, um, and, and, and that sort of thing, right? Dallas, Houston, uh, and, and so on and so on. You get the picture. But, you know, the, also we want to think about something else in terms of success. Uh, the most, po what are the most popular stations? All right. So regardless of your, your region's size, your market's size, which stations are the most popular in that region? Oh, here we go. Which music genres are most popular? Hence, those stations might be more. A Typically, a radio station is owned by a media company or group, and they operate several channels at the one station. And each of the channels would have a distinct genre of programming, right? So uh, a station has their country music station, their classic rock station, their, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 maybe like uh, Christian or, or uh, you know, motivational uh, programming. And so they've got these different genres of, uh, pro of product. And, and I think those of you that have been with us studying genre theory, we can, we can cross apply those lessons right here and understand how it works in radio. And um, so you could be at the same station and, and those different channels are firing out to different demographics of, con of listeners. Those listeners are consumers. And so, you, you know, you want to understand, oh, is my product going after, should I be advertising on... Um, country stations instead of, you know, the hip hop station, right? That's two different demographics of listener. And so if, if my product's going to one segment of the population or, you know, maybe an age group, then, you know, even within that company, you've got to make those strategic decisions. I think this is making sense. I feel you all nodding your heads and not just because you're falling asleep right? Um, I'm sure if you were that tired, you would have turned this off by now and uh, gone and done something else. Okay. Let's do this. I got a couple more pages here, but we're moving through these in short form. Let's take a break. Uh, and we'll, we'll come back with uh, perhaps I predict a final segment, wrap up these questions for uh, PR advertising and brand management. 